Bernard, and we are at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. And after 12 rounds of boxing, Canelo Alvarez defeats Jermel Charlo by unanimous decision and is still the undisputed super middleweight champion of the world. And now, let's go to post. We'll get to your press questions, but first, uh, 154 pound world champion, Jermel Charlo, I'd like to ask you to come to the podium, give your uh, comments from the night, and then we'll take questions from the press. Thanks, Mel. Shit, what a night, you know? I'm on, uh, proud of myself, you know, took a chance, jumped out there strong, right off a hand injury, jumped up there with the best, one of the best guys in the division, one of the best guys in boxing. So um, my head is held high. I am proud of myself. I've done an a awesome job for Lions Only and, and my crew and my team. And, and I love boxing, so I'm not going nowhere. And, um, you know, just jump right into it. And, you know, Kalo is a motherfucking beast, you know what I'm saying? He's an ox. You know, uh, maybe I felt that more because of the fact that, uh, you know, this is my first time at that weight division. I wish I could have gained a little bit more weight uh, in between the, the, you know, from the way in to, to that time, but I can't control my body and I can't, you know, but like God had this already written and, um, you know, I'm glad that I was in there with, the, you know, to put on the performance for, for Showtime Pay Review. Questions? Go ahead. Hey, uh, Jermel. Did you feel like his strength was an issue? Like, you know, he was able to kind of back you up a lot throughout the fight. Was that an issue? Um, I feel like, uh, you know, you can't just charge at uh, any fighter, you know, like, uh, you can't just, you can't, you know, his, his power did play an effect, but it wasn't like too, too dominant to a point where I, I couldn't come forward and I should have came forward a little bit more in this fight. Um, but you know, I'm a human and you get tired, your lateral movement, uh, and you know, like I said, I felt some of his punches, so it was cool. And you, I think you said you weighed about 172 or 173. In your opinion, what would have been optimal if you could have, you know, gotten a little heavier? How much more would have made a difference? Uh, maybe five pounds, possibly more. You know what I mean? Uh, I just felt, I just felt his, you know, you know, the same strength that he normally have. You know, like what we, what we usually see. Um, like I said, I was testing myself in there, so, you know, um, that is. Thank you. Question in the back. Uh, I can't see. Oh. So you have to have the mic. Stand by. Yo, yo. Mel, what's up, brother? Congratulations on just, you know, being a part of this big event. Um, in the seventh round, you got hit with a big shot, and um, you didn't initially go down. It looked like you took a knee. Um, I kind of wanted to know what in that moment, like, was it, you know, you got stung and you were trying to clear your head? What, what happened in that moment uh, for you? Yeah, you know, like, that was, like, my true first time, like, you know, feeling, a, a, you know, like a, a woozy shot, you know what I mean? Like, I'm the one always giving them. And so, yeah, I, um, I knew best. I watched boxing and been a part of it so long that, you know, if I would have just jumped out there, I would have kind of embarrassed myself. So, you know, or shit could have been different, but I was smart enough to regroup, recover, and I recovered really fast. Um, probably could have stayed up or whatever, but I would have just been fighting, trying to clear my head and still be getting hit Charlotte's. Were you really hurt in that moment? You came back and you threw a hook right after that that seemed to land pretty good. Um, you feel like you were still in the moment, like you were fine after that after that moment? Correct. Yeah, I was, I was good. You know, I get back up and it's nothing. I got my eyes back up. <laughs> you know, get back up and continue to fight. Jamel, uh, right here in the front row. Yeah. Willie Ramirez with the Associated Press. You, you mentioned to Kevin that it's, he's not the type of opponent that you just charge at, that you come out. Throughout the fight, it looked as if you were trying to sort of get into your groove, but he was controlling the tempo. Was there ever a point in the fight you felt comfortable, that you felt that you, you were in control or at your pace, your tempo, or did you feel that you were having to adapt and fight his fight? Um, I, I really don't know what round it was, but it was like within, within some of the later rounds, uh, I felt like I hit him with a solid one too that was kind of like effective. He didn't see some, uh, you know, I also hit him with a good hook that was kind of blinding. He didn't possibly see, but uh, you know, I felt like I never got to a real point to I can get into my, my bag like I wanted to. 
like uh, truthfully. Yermel, how did you feel about this experience in the super middleweight division? And after your rest, who's next? I'm going back down to 154, so that's going to be major. Uh, I can do it. Yeah, I can make the way easy. And uh, the experience was amazing. It was cool. I, uh, I appreciate uh, fans of boxing, period. Um, but you got to get your hats off to the Mexican fans that, that support boxing and, and come out to shows like this. Um, and, I, you know, I never want to leave out my, you know, my African-American fans because uh, my, my, my American fans, period. I just want to say you can't leave them out because, you know, they come out just as well as, you know, the Mexican fans. It's just one is crazier than the other. Uh, Jamel. Yeah. Uh, back here. Uh, Keith Eidick from BoxingScene.com. Jamel, had, at the higher weight that you were tonight, ha did you feel sluggish or anything, or how did you feel when you were moving around the ring? Uh, a little tad bit. You know, uh, I'm used to moving around much lighter, of course, but it's, it's, it was fine. You know, like I, uh, I moved around. I was just trying to, uh, you know, follow my game plan to my coaches. And, uh, you know, a part of that was, you know, really coming forward, but, you know, Moving around was a part of the game plan too, but I didn't, you know, feel a little. I felt the weight, of course. Uh, Jamal, over here. Um, congratulations on your effort. Um, given you've said you're going back to 154, you've got three of the belts in that division. Is the obvious fight to make the winner of Tim Zhu and Brian Mendoza? Um, I, I just follow the plans and I fight whoever. Obviously, we can see. Um, it's about being great, and I'm already a, a legend in boxing. Hopefully, y'all put me in the Hall of Fames. I don't know who the hell controls that, but um, I deserve it. And um, possibly, uh, if I come back to 154, or I'll just, you know, listen to my coaches, let them tell me what to do next, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm on it. Would you like to become undisputed again, though, at 154? Of course, you know, um, but, you know, I, I, it's about, you know, fighting the best fights and making the most money at this point in my life and career. So fighting, uh, you know, Ron Mendoza or uh, Tazu, who got an Australian fan base, you know, it's just not as um, satisfying to me sometimes. But um, I, like I said, I listen to my coaches, follow the plans of my management, and, and go from there. Jermel, Ernesto Amador from Lopo Escuadra Boxeo. And, and the same question, please, for Johan Guzman. Uh, you mentioned that you can beat Canelo, that you are ready to, to beat uh, his skills. Uh, uh, Canelo's skills surprise you? Because Canelo mentioned it's different when you talk uh, about me, but in the, in the ring it's going to be different. So Canelo's skills surprise you? Um, personally, uh, I don't want to say it surprised me. It's, it, 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 he showed... Uh, he showed his attention span was a lot thicker in the ring than, than it seems. Uh, I don't, I, you know, I don't speak Spanish, so I don't know that game plan. Um, but just watching his skills in the ring with me, um, I felt like I, I could have did a lot more um, than, than I did. So um, I've seen it before. I, I've been in the ring with a lot of different fighters, and I've seen people with, you know, I've seen skills. And he has a he has some some good some great skills in the ring. You got to give it to him. Um, I don't even know when the last time I even talked about his skills. <laughs> like that's just something that he needed to motivate himself. And oh, so well be it. We're here to fight, and I got in there to fight. It's as simple as that. So skills, everybody. If you at the top and you're in a pound for pound, and you're one of the best fighters in the world, you got to have some type of skills. So um, did I not believe in his skills? Shit, I don't know when I didn't believe in his skills. So fuck. I don't, I don't care about that. Like, I don't believe in nobody's skills. You know, I think I'm the best fighter in the world. I still think that right now. So um, I'm cool. I'm cool with that. Hey, Jamel, right here. Mm -hmm. Dan Rayfield, uh, over yeah. to the side. Hey, How you doing? I'm good. Thank you. I wondered, uh, it seemed like, you know, you obviously got behind in a hole early. No right. doubt about that. So I wonder at what point in the fight did you realize this is not going how I wanted it to go. And at some point, I'm going to have to radically change the plan and maybe try to sell out a little bit or whatever because it just didn't ever really seem to happen. Uh, yeah, it didn't, um, and um, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, second round, uh, Coach Derek let me know, you know, like I slipped up on that round and I, I lost the second round and I was like, damn. So um, I just never got to a point where I can make the fight more 
to a point where they could put a little bit of pressure on his team, a little bit more pressure on him as well. So, I, 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 you know, that's, what, that's part of it. So the other question I had then was, and maybe I missed this before I came in, when he dropped you, I think it was the seventh round, Yeah. what kind of power did he have? And did that make you reticent to try to sell out the rest of the fight because you might get caught with something huge coming back? Nah, I don't know what you mean by sell out. Just, like, go for it. You know, uh, not, not wildly and recklessly, but, you know, just go and do what you can do and try to nah, really just, uh, no, pick up the pace. No sell out, period, with whatsoever. It was just about continuing to just fight the fight the way you fight and, and try to optimize everything that the coaches say and hurry up and get it done. And so um, it was a flash. It was like a shot I didn't see, you know, um, and I, just, I regrouped myself. I gave myself a, a, a chance to regroup, but I thought like, okay, now we got to go back and win the next few rounds because I know when you, you know, it's an 18 round. Thank you. Jamel, over here. I came for Okay. Muhammad Mubarak with EURweb.com. Hello, Muhammad. Uh, throughout the fight, it seemed to be uh, a habit that he had of putting you in a headlock and trying to get rough with you. Right. Um, did it bother you any time, any of those tactics? Uh, and no, not at all. I, I don't think so. Not that. Not, uh, I, did, I do remember the headlock a few times. Matter of fact, every time I... Kind of got it in that position. I felt like I felt that you know, he he's he's a clever fighter. Do you think that uh, maybe if you were a little more aggressive throughout the fight, still, I could steal that from him in the future. <laughs> what do you think that uh, if you could have been more aggressive than you were uh, throughout the fight? I could have. Yeah, I could have been more aggressive. Honestly, Jamel over here to your right on the button. Yeah. Uh, Francisco Salazar, Ring Magazine. Um, one of the game plans that Al Bernstein focused on for Canelo was cutting off the ring. Do you think that maybe that was one component that maybe worked against you, that he cut off the ring more more quicker, more sooner than you expected him to do? No, I actually thought that, um, I mean, if you're from Ring Magazine, you know, boxing, um, when you're in a square circle, I felt like I was rotating pretty well getting around, and I was able actually able to catch... Uh, a lot of shots with my with my, my gloves. True. So I, I did rotate uh, well. It was just about you know my attack when it be, when it came down to after I rotated and got out of the shot, you know, or blocked the shot. My return was my issue, and and in my aggressiveness of going forward. Thank you. Yeah. Time for Jam just two more, then we'll yeah. let Jamel. Jamel Charlo. Okay, Stephen Cudeno, KO Art Sportsman, uh, congratulations on a great performance, uh, great effort. Could you clarify what's going on with the WBO? I know you were going to be undisputed for this fight. They said they were going to ship you afterwards. Just what's is going it, is on? Is the WBO in, in, in the room at all? Is there any representative for the WBO? Uh, so. They're not going to say it. <laughs> they are. I mean, they have to, right? I mean, this is a big fight. This is, um, I don't know, truthfully, you know, um, I would like to talk with somebody from the WBO um, and, and see what kind of issues they can resolve. I don't know if they can already made their decision or whatever they made, but you know, that, that, that was already taken from me from the beginning before the fight, you know, and that sucks, you know, part of life and a part of, I gotta just continue to roll with the punches, but uh, you know, Jamel Charlo never get the fair end of the, the, the stick. I gotta go and fight for mine, but you know, I, I believe that moving up to two weight classes to fight for undisputed uh, and, and continue to stay active. And of course, I'm not, I, I wasn't active for a year because I was off with a hand injury. And, you know, from the moment that my hand got injured, the fight got canceled or uh, whatever happened, the WBO sent me letters from like 30 letters and had me going back and forth to the doctor randomly just, just having to prove to them that MRIs and CAT scans and CT scans and, and X-rays and, and any time that they wanted to. They must really, um, you know, like got a relationship with the people in Australia. So, and, and that's okay with me. And I, I just got to continue to be a champion and continue to fight and, 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 you know, bars none. Put my heart on the line every time I get in there. Yeah. Jamal. Oh. Lance Pugmire, ppv.com. I wanted to ask you, I know you talked about this in the ring, um, Terrence Crawford, does that make all the sense in the world for your next fight? 
Uh, yeah, you know, Terrence Crawford could be um, on a radar. I um, think he already probably been on Twitter, you know, like lip wrestling with the internet just to get some clout, some, some fans, and it's fine, you know. Um, but, you know, he's, he's a, a champion. He's great at it, what he do. And, um, you know, my brother Earl got to get it on with him. And Earl want his lick back. So, and um, that's what boxing is about. So for the next few years or in time, in due time, you guys will be completely entertained. Um, and maybe I'll talk a little bit more shit because that's what y'all want from me. Because Terrence Crawford been talking shit, so they're gonna bring out a different animal in me. But uh, I don't know which animal. <laughs> But yeah, man, I can fight Terrence Crawford next. Jamel, yeah. thank you. Uh, um, where you at? Uh, back here. Oh, thank you very oh, much. Oh, oh. <laughs> Terrific promotion. Question, Appreciate yeah. all your hard work. Hey, shout out to Floyd. Throughout. He came in and showed me some love. I want to Floyd. You know, I got I to gotta let y'all see the great. He don't come around too often. Floyd Mayweather. All right, I guess I'm out. <laughs> Lines only for life. And I'm Crystal Hart reporting from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the fights.